Hey guys, what is up? This is Cody or X Code A. How's it going today? Hopefully everybody watching this video is having yourself a snazzy day. Let me know in the comments down below where you're watching the video from inside or outside the United States. I always love to know. Please let me know in the comments. So I've been talking about making this video for quite a while now. It's going to be a three part story, three part video. This video is going to be called the Juvie Experience. This is the story about how I ended up getting arrested and ended up in juvenile detention. It was not a very fun time. It was quite a story and I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos in the future. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a longer video. Maybe grab some popcorn. All right, listen, this is the second time I've ever gotten arrested. This was like probably the one of the worst, worst days of my life. I'd have to say it all started. It all started. It was a summertime i think it was in the in between sophomore and junior year of high school i got a call from a friend saying that their parents are out of town for an entire week and that they're throwing a rager at their house and they want me to come there and i'm thinking to myself i'm calculating there's no way in hell my dad's gonna allow me to go to this party he's gonna want to talk to the parents he's gonna want to know all the details who's gonna be there is there gonna be drinking and smoking and of course there was and of course there wasn't gonna be any parents. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, this has gotta be one of the worst things you could ever do to your parents. So I'd highly suggest never doing this. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna just go, turn off my phone. I got picked up by my friends, took the battery out of my phone. That's how old I am, dude. I used to have a phone you could took the battery out of. Imagine that. So everything was fine until about like eight o'clock at night. You know, when the, when the party actually started, it wasn't a rager like they said it was going to be. You know, there's a bottle of vodka. Everybody was blazing. Uh, there's maybe like 10 people there. It was a party. You know, we had beer pong set up. And I knew at this point, at this point in time, it's dark outside. My dad is probably freaking out. So I pull, you know, put the battery in my phone and I'm like, hey, dad, I just want to let you know I'm okay. I'm at a friend's house. And he's like, where are you right now? I'm calling the cops. And I just took the battery out. Just the amount of stress that I put him through in my high school years. I'm surprised he's not a full head of gray hair. So this was like the first time or one of the first times I'd ever even been at a party. I'm trying to think of anything really memorable happened other than me taking my first shot of vodka because I got really peered pressured in like everybody in the entire room like cody do it dude take a shot let's go let's do it take a shot and i'm like okay you know and i just took it and i didn't feel anything man it was like one of the first times i ever drank like actual liquor i didn't really feel anything i was so blazed out dude i was we were blazing left and right man my my buddy was making edibles where we always had you know joints passing around it was a really good time i was having a blast and it was, I think, three days of this. The only other memorable moment I have is I, I think on night two, I was down on the couch where I was sleeping. And at this point, most of everybody went home. The two people who like lived at the house were upstairs in their bedroom and I was down on the couch and there's this other girl there and she was sloppy drunk, dude. Like Jim Leahy drunk still drinking, still got a bottle in her hand, like just saying the most wild stuff. I could not tell if she was trying to come on to me. I, I, had no, I had no idea what was going on. I'm just sitting there like just blazed. I wasn't even drunk. I wasn't drinking. I was just so out, completely out of it. 10 out of 10 high. And like, I couldn't even understand what she was saying to me. She's like leaning all over me and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know what's about to happen. And she's just like, oh bear back and just starts puking all over the bathroom that's just like one of the memories of this of this uh this whole night a uh, couple nights that i remember and at the end of every night that i stayed there i would put the battery in my phone call my dad he'd pick up one ring just ready he was ready dude he was he was waiting for that call and i'd be like yeah i just want to let you know i'm okay you know I'm just i'm probably come home tomorrow and he's like no you're coming home right now the cops are looking for you and i'm like take the battery out. I don't want to deal with that, you know, because I, I, in my head, I, I think this is how it used to work. If you took the battery out of the phone, the cops couldn't trace your location. And that turns out to be true because they couldn't find me. <laughs> now on the third night, the third night, this is where things got crazy. This is where things got to a point where it's like, all right, tomorrow I need to go home. This is getting wild. This is getting nuts. Full, full house of people. The party's going, the beer pong, the bottles going around, everybody's messed up. And then somebody peeps out the window and sees a freaking cop car 
like parked in front of the house and i'll never forget them whipping around with the most serious look on their face like hide everything there's cops outside looking for cody and i'm like oh shit because i'm just 10 out of 10 baked just just baked i have never seen never in my life seen so many intoxicated people hide things in a matter of 30 seconds the beer pong table folded up all the cups stacked put away everything it looked spotless in this place in a matter of two two minutes flat like maybe two minutes and i'm sitting there crouched behind the counter so they can't like peep through the window and look at me my heart is racing dude i don't know what's about to happen i'm about to get arrested now i brought the cops to the house and now everybody there is gonna get in trouble because i'm underage i'm like 16 and there's alcohol i'm freaking out dude i'm thinking i'm gonna be the worst person ever all these people are gonna hate me so many thoughts going through my head i'm about to get arrested dude this was terrible we just lay low turn most of the lights off wait maybe like 15 minutes and then someone gets the courage to like crawl up to the front door peek out the door and there's nothing there there's no car there's no cop the sigh of relief dude just the moment the moment of relief it was like biting into a mcdonald's hash brown while you're hung over it was just the sigh of relief the moment of relief was just incredible it was just like man i'm not going to jail tonight the fun is going to continue and then my buddy came up to me who's like lives at the house he's like you know cody you should probably go home tomorrow man if the cops are looking for you that was a close call we almost all got in trouble and i'm like yeah yeah the fun's probably gotta end soon huh so the morning after i called up a couple friends and i'm like hey dude like meet me here uh, we gotta meet up and we'll, we'll ride back to my house or we'll just figure something out to do i wasn't like exactly intending on going back home but i knew i needed to and now the issue at hand here the issue at hand is i had this like random bike i don't remember where i got this bike from maybe i'm like borrowing it from a friend but like me and two other friends were riding bikes and we ride all the way across town the entire time i am sketched out we are taking back roads bike paths any trying to stay away from the main road because i know that there's police officers looking for me and on top of it i had a half zip and a grinder well about 11 grams and a grinder in my backpack in a big jar and because i was flipping at the time luckily i didn't have any bags or anything you know to make it look like i was selling like a scale or anything like that but my anxiety level was on a million dude i was like bugged out and all i wanted to do was get home hide my stuff and then deal with the consequences that's all that was like my main goal of the day so we we moseyed our way all the way back towards my house and i remember the pinnacle moment of looking at my friends and i was like all right guys see you later i'm probably gonna go get arrested and they're like have fun, man. So I ride the bike up to the apartments, dude. I ride all the way to the apartment. And my dad's waiting outside on the phone. Like, it just so happened. He's just outside on the phone. And I ride up to him. And I'm like, hey, dad, what's going on? And he's like, where have you been? The cops have been looking for you for days. And I'm like, ah, I've just been at a friend's house. No big deal. He's like, no big deal? What's in your backpack? And I'm like, don't worry about what's in the backpack. And he's like, no, no, no hangs up the phone, calls the cops. I'm not letting you in the apartment until you empty your backpack right here, right now. And I'm like, peace. That's the only thing I can think to do. I was like, all right, I'm gonna just head out. I'm, I'm out, dude, I'm leaving again. So I ditched the bike, run as fast as I can. I cannot even express to you in words. Running from the cops puts you in cheetah mode. The adrenaline running through your blood can make you run like an Olympic runner. It, it just puts this energy into your body that you didn't even know existed. The fear of getting arrested makes your body run as fast as actual possible. I'm going in between apartment buildings and I'm, I'm just trying to think at a million thoughts a second. What could I possibly do to get out of this? What can I do? Holy crap, I don't have the bike anymore. My friends are gone, I'm all alone. And I get to like th this mountain. And normally, normally, I've been on this mountain like a bunch of times for videos. And normally the path just kind of goes up sideways goes around and then goes up to the mountain view. I'll show a picture of what the mountain view looks like right now. And now normally, like I said, you'd go up the path, you'd make a turn and then you go up the mountain at a slant. I go up to the path and just run straight up the mountain. I wasn't even out of breath. I didn't feel tired. I was just 
jogging up a mountain like this angle. I was determined to get up this mountain. I made it up there not even five minutes flat. And ha about halfway up the mountain, I find this really big tree. Because I'm thinking to myself, where do I hide this backpack? I need to dispose of this. I, I can't have this on me. So I put the backpack behind the tree, keep going up the mountain, make it all the way to the top. That's when I was out of breath. I'm like, oh, I think I'm finally safe. It's all hitting me. Just like, oh, okay, maybe I'm good now. The backpack's hidden. I just got to go back to my house, face the consequences. I've talked to the cops before previously for something like this. The first time I ever left home without telling my dad where I was, tripped on acid you know the cop talked to me at school the next day and just wanted to make sure i was okay that's all it was so that's what i was assuming was going to happen i was going to go back to my house they were going to be like you can't be doing this like you know slap on the wrist type of situation and that was that so i walk all the way around the mountain start walking back up towards towards the apartment and about halfway halfway to the apartment a cop drove by me didn't even recognize me I assume they were looking for someone with a backpack, so that's probably why they didn't know who I was. I thought that was the funniest thing ever, man. So I get all the way back to the apartment. Surprisingly, there's no cops waiting for me outside. And I, I go in there. We had a Lazy Boy recliner at the time. I missed that thing. I don't know why my dad got rid of it. But anyways, it was so nice. I was just sitting on the Lazy Boy. And my dad used to be a volunteer EMT before I was born. So he has a police scanner and he's just, it's just something he's into. All right. And when something's crazy is going on in the town, like a big fire, like, you know, and, I mean, there's not a lot of crime around here, but like if anything's happening crazy, he just likes to tune into the scanner and hear like the police chatter and stuff and see what's going on. That's already on. Okay. That's been on because he's been patiently waiting for, for the police to find me and know where I am so he can come pick me up. And so I'm just sitting there laying back in the lazy boy, listening to the police scanner, listening to the police try and find me. It was the funniest thing ever to me. I'm sitting there dying, laughing, like, ha ha. And then my dad walks through the door. This is where things got serious, all right? He's just like, the cops are looking for you. They're on their way. I'm calling them right now. And I'm like, why? Why, why, are, you call, why are you calling the cops? I'm home safe. Isn't that what you want? And he's just like, I gotta let them know you're here. They're looking for you. We gotta cancel it or at least talk to them. He was beyond, like mad is an understatement. It, it, disappointment is an understatement. I don't think I've ever seen a facial expression like on his face like this day. He was beyond bewildered. If I could think of one thing to describe the emotions on his face, is probably the clerk from Monsters, Inc. That's about how I imagined his emotions were going through, just like the way I was acting, my attitude. So we wait there for like 10 minutes. The police show up, dude, they showed up. And this is where things got bad. This is where the moment of truth, dude, this is the moment of truth. So the police come in, you know, hands on the hips, all intimidation. They got the, the biker sunglasses on, can't see their face, just completely covered. Batman belt on and everything. And they're like, so Cody, we've been looking for you for a couple days. Where have you been? And I was like, oh, I was just at a friend's house at a party. And they're like, what's the house name? Who lives there? And I'm like, I'm not telling you that. And they're like, oh, so you're being uncooperative. And I'm like, why would I tell you? Like, why? why what, what is that going to help me in any scenario, in any capacity? I was like being cocky with them. Like I did, I, I knew in my heart that I was just going to get away with it. So like, I didn't really care what I was saying. I was in my own home at this point. They couldn't really do anything. All the sacred skunk is, was hidden away behind the tree. I thought I was freaking golden. And then they were like, so where's your backpack? And I'm like, what are you talking about? What backpack? I played it off completely, like straight face. Ricky from Trailer Park Boys level of lying. Like I, I looked at him straight in the eyes and I'm like, what backpack? What are you talking about? He reaches over. He's like, this backpack right here found my backpack. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not my backpack. They were like, Cody's dad, come and talk to us for a second. I was like, oh no, oh no. So my dad and the police officers went out to the front steps. They had a little chit chat. They had a little talk. And in this talk, my dad had said multiple things that altered the course of the next two weeks of my life for the worse. So he not only, he not only confirmed that this backpack was in fact mine. He said at some point, it might've not been at the front steps at this moment, but he said that I was riding around with a heroin addict. 
okay which was not true number one did i know people that would do that back then yes but that that's not who i was hanging out with all right that is absolutely not so the police were looking for me for about three four days thinking i was riding around doing heroin so the police officers come back in the house and they're like so your dad told us that this is your backpack and i'm like well it's not my backpack and they're like well that's too bad you're getting arrested now still in my mind i'm thinking okay they're gonna arrest me bring me down give me a couple tickets and i'm coming back home didn't didn't really turn out that way obviously by the title of the video they come up to me my dad knows the the chief of police that just so happened to be there at the same time i did get a you know a little privileged treatment i'm not gonna lie because normally they'd handcuff you slam me against the car that kind of thing but this dude walks up to me i stand up off the lazy boy that that would be the last comfy seat that i sit in in the next two weeks i'll tell you that for one thing i, I stand up and he grabs me by the arm so much force just 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 gripping it just fucking gripping it he's like you're not going to run, are you? And I'm like, listen, man, no, that, that I'm not trying to make it worse. No. So he walks me out to the cop car. And like, as I'm walking to the cop car, I'm just like thinking in my head, like, man, maybe I can football juke this guy out and keep running. But then I'm thinking to myself, I've seen a lot of episodes of cops, you know, a lot of episodes that doesn't really work out well, especially because they got vehicles. They know what they know. They damn well know all the trails and everything, how to find me. They freaking used that 99 hunter level of tracking just up the mountain, somehow found my backpack. I don't know how the hell they found that. I mean, they brought the bloodhounds out or something, man. Listen, I, I truly have no idea how they found this freaking backpack. They, I think they're trained to be able to see like when someone's running, like a, a like rocks moved, leaves moved in a, in a path going up or something. It's the only thing I could think of. So they put me in the car and this is when I'm just, it's all just hitting me. You know, it's all just hitting me. It's, it, it was like a real core moment in my life. It was just like, wow, I really have put myself in this situation and now I'm about to get arrested. I'm in the back of a locked cop car. It, it's just, just the emotions going through my body. It was just like, wow, like how did it come to this? I never thought from all the crazy stuff that I did at that age that I would ever end up in this situation. And I, 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 listen, I'll tell you, there was a lot of times where I could have been arrested absolutely for much worse. I don't even want to listen. Let's not get into that. But listen, this was like a real pivotal moment in my life. It was like, oh my God, like I'm actually facing consequences for something like legal consequences. This is not good. Not good at all. So we drive all the way to the police station. They bring us, bring me around back. The garage doors close behind the cop car. And the window's down a little bit because it's freaking hot. It is so hot. Dead of summer. A cop walks up to the car, car door, opens it up, peeks his head in. And he's just like, all right, so how much devil's lettuce you got in there? How much is in the jar? And this is a moment. This is a moment where I could have possibly gotten away with it i could have just been like what jar are you talking about like that's not mine if i had only said that i really really do wonder if things would have gone differently but i also don't think so because my dad admitted that it was my backpack so it, i felt defeated i felt like all right maybe i should just cooperate and maybe they'll be nicer they were already real mad because they were looking for me for three or four days and couldn't find me. <laughs> Makes me crack up just thinking about it. Anyways, I was just like, ah, about 10 grams, man. And he's like, so under a half zip. And I'm like, yes, under a half zip. I'm not selling. And that's what he was really trying to figure out. Because if it, if it was over 14, it would have been intent to sell. That would have been a much worse scenario. There was also a grinder in there. So I had a little paraphernalia and he's just like, okay, come with me grabs he grabs me by the arm with the force of an elephant he brings me into the holding cell and i'm just sitting there all right let me make a phone call they're just like yeah maybe later and he's this dude just playing solitaire on the on the computer for like three hours just solitaire not answering any of my questions not even looking at me when i ask something and i'm just sitting there it still really hasn't even hit me all that much like i'm just sitting there like all right I just got to sit here for a while. They're going to give me a couple tickets. My dad's going to pick me up. That was all that was going through my head. On top of it, this rogue cold just randomly hit me. And my nose is running like, like a faucet. And I'm like, dude, can I get some paper towels? I have never once in my life, I didn't even think it was possible to have a paper towel quality 
lower than school paper towels. This was like just straight sandpaper. I don't even think they were paper. Like it, it was, it, I can't even describe in words how horrible the quality of, of paper towels they gave me to wipe my nose. I was like sneezing. I don't know, maybe they had something in the air vents in this place or something I was allergic to, but I was just, had a random feeling of a cold going on. So I waited in this holding cell for about six or seven hours. I could be wrong about this. I really could be wrong about this because I've had someone tell me that no, that's not illegal. I don't think they're supposed to hold minors overnight. That was, that was step one. That was step one. Number two, they wouldn't let me contact my father. I, I asked like probably five times, you know, dude, everybody who gets arrested, gets a phone call, right? Like, come on, let me, let me call my dad and just talk to him for a second. And they're like, yeah, maybe later. He just continued on solitaire, just completely, completely curving everything I'm saying. And what I didn't know is that this five, six hour wait up until one in the morning, they were waiting on a response from a judge to figure out what to do with me. So they woke up a judge at midnight or one in the morning. Perfect timing, isn't it? They woke up a judge, told them what was going on, and asked them to sign off on to what to do with me. So you can imagine they were in a great mood. It gets to a point where it's like, it's five, six hours in. I'm like, dude, what is happening? Like, what's going on? And the cop finally turns around and he's just like, oh, you don't know what's about to happen? And I'm like, no. And he's just like, oh, well, you think you're going home tonight or something? And I'm like, uh... Yeah, it was just some freaking devil's lettuce, man. Like, what, what do you want from me? And he's just like, oh, no, no, no. You're going to juvie. And I'm like, what? For, for, for Kush? What? Like, I never heard about that in my life. I probably had 10 friends, like 10 people I knew in high school that have gotten caught with, with the devil's lettuce. Just got a ticket, dude. Maybe some probation at the worst. And they're talking about bringing me to juvie. I was just like, well, what? And that was about the time where the fax machine came through with the signature for the judge to put me into juvie, dude. So the cop gets up, handcuffs me. This is where the handcuffs come into play. Puts me in the back of the cruiser. And the ride to the juvenile detention, this is when, <laughs> this is like, you know, I said that that pivotal moment where like I realized the consequences are actually stacking up. This is where I can't even describe the feeling. It felt like it felt surreal, like I was in a dream or something. It felt like I can't, I just couldn't believe what was happening to me. I had so many questions, so many thoughts, like how is this possible? They did not call my dad and ask if he wanted me in juvie, which I think when you're a minor, they have to ask your parents. I could be wrong about that. Any lawyers in the comments, let me know. So I haven't contacted my dad. It's been six hours waiting in the holding cell. Now I'm on the way to like the worst area of my entire state. I'm just looking out the window. Like my mind was like blank and going at a million miles at the same time. Like I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to expect. I had never been in a situation like this. Like, oh my gosh, I'm about to go into a place with a bunch of like kids that do a whole lot worse. And all I had was like, freaking kush bro like what i was just so confused like why I, I did not get it like i get that you know the cops were looking for me they were a little mad or something they couldn't find me all i did was go to a party and then get caught with a little kush bro it's not like i was robbing people or stealing cars or anything insane like that now I'm, now i got my ass in juvie dude here we go so the cop ends up getting lost that was the funniest part this cop's parked on the side of the street in like probably the worst street of the worst area of my entire state. So he's trying to put the address into his GPS on the dashboard. I think this might have been before like GPSs were on phones like really, really good. So listen, he's like trying to put it in because he had the wrong address or something. We were like pretty far away from where the juvenile detention was. And he, he finally gets it and we arrive, go through the gates, they close behind me, there's barbed wire around all the all the fences, and I'm just like, oh my god, like this is, this is insane, I can't believe I'm here, I can't believe this is happening, it feels like a dream, like it really feels like I'm in a nightmare dream or something, I get out of the car, same scenario, it's like down into a basement, closes, cl door closes behind us, I go through a couple doors, still got the handcuffs on, they take those off, and I sit down, it's like two in the morning at this point, I'm tired. I don't know what's going on. And the moment I sat down in the chair, the waterworks happened, man. I started crying, bro. Like really crying. And like I could I could act all tough and not put this part in the video. I was crying. 
dude, I was, I was not happy to be there. I was because in my mind, I'm like, how long am I going to be here? Nobody has told me anything at this point. Like you're just going to juvie. Like that's the only thing that I was going through my head. And it, I was sitting there distraught. I was ugly crying. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was, it was like watching the movie dog, you know, like that movie just, just hits, you know? And I, I was sitting there like trying to ask people questions. Nobody knew, nobody knew anything. You know, like, I don't know. You're going to have to talk to somebody tomorrow about your charges and how long you're going to be here. So I'm just sitting in this chair. They're getting my information. Um, gave me a change of clothes. I had to strip search in front, in front of somebody. That was just fantastic. Dude, the clothes that they give you at these places have the nastiest smell, dude. It's like clean laundry mixed with just BO. Like it's it's like they don't use enough soap or something. Just nasty. They made me take a shower before the, before the clothes. I forgot to, to put that part in. Yeah, first time ever being in like an all metal shower. Like that, that just really, that's really like a moment where it's sunk in. Like I am in jail basically it wasn't jails juvies it's a big difference i know that i'm not trying to upplay it at all but it's just the first moment where like i am locked in this building and i cannot leave like they they will not let me leave everything's locked and i sat back down and they're just like oh you hungry like we can get some food and i'm like no and they're like well we're gonna get you some food anyways and they bring back like a big plate of food that I wouldn't eat if I was 10 out of 10 stoned on a deserted island and about to die from starvation. Like it just looked really bad. I guess I'm a bit of a picky eater, but this is something I would never eat. Just never eat. I think it was like Spanish rice and something else, which honestly, I know it said it looked bad. It That looked better than any of the food that I had for the rest of the time I was in juvie. So maybe they, they actually gave me food from like one of the people that was working there or something. Maybe they had some of that or something. But anyways, I didn't even touch it. I, I was not hungry at all. All I could, all I was doing was crying, dude. I'm not gonna lie, dude. They're sitting there taking a picture of me. I saw the picture at a later point in time. I, it looked so bad, dude. My eyes were just, I was bawling, bro. So after like an hour of waiting in this, uh, this chair, I, I, I maintained my composure a little bit. You know, I stopped crying cause I didn't want to look like that guy, you know, like I'm, I'm about to walk in here, see, see a bunch of other people. And like, I don't want to see them me crying. Like I'm, I'm some, uh, you know, someone that's easy to mess with or something. Like I, I'm thinking of all these prison shows that I've watched throughout my life. And I'm like, all right, I got to man up. I got to punch the tallest dude I see. No, it's not, it's not, it's not what I did. But so they bring me over to C block, dude. I remember C block. Block. And I remember asking like, what C block dude? Like what, what kind of kids are in here? And they're like, oh, it's like the lowest offenders. You got nothing to worry about. It turns out there was some people in there for like beating up their parents and robbing cars and stuff. So like I said, I wasn't like making a joke earlier. Like there's actual people in here for like doing bad thing. And I'm just in here for some kush dog. So it was like two in the morning at this point. Obviously the only thing they're going to tell me to do is to go into my room and go to sleep. So I go in there, they close the door behind me. And that's, that is like a moment that I'll never forget. Like I'm in this small room, two bunk beds. I was alone, which was, you know, I, I guess a, a plus because on one of the later nights, I got someone that just would not stop freestyling. Like he just was rapping until four in the morning straight, not letting me talk, like not letting me sleep. Every time I'd be like, dude, please just, just, just please stop. He would just keep going. So the first night that you, you go into these places, you're just like automatically on uh, Sudoku watch. I don't want to say the S word because I think it just gets any video demonetized. Um, it's when you like want to un unalive yourself, kind of like that. I, w I told him straight up I was not having those kind of thoughts. I guess the first night going into one of these places, you're just on Sudoku watch. Like you're, you're just, it's just like policy. So I'm finally just laying there like about to fall asleep and every 15 minutes someone has to come up to the door put this metal thing onto the door that's made this like loud metal clanking noise and it goes beep so and they had to shine a flashlight into the door and look at me with the flashlight so imagine trying to <laughs> imagine you're in this situation all right you, first time ever really getting arrested you get put into juvie, you're locked in a room, not knowing how long you're going to be there. Think of all the thoughts going through your head and you can finally, you're finally about to go to sleep 2.30 in the morning, 3 in the morning at this point. And now someone has to shine a light in your face every 15 minutes. Listen, it was not very ideal, not very ideal. So listen, I'm, I'm looking at the recording right now. It's about 45 minutes of recording. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it here for part one of this story. There's going to be part two and part three, maybe even a part four, because there was a lot that happened in this 
juvie experience and I want to break it up into a couple different videos because listen I know the TikTok attention has got to you buddy all right listen this is already a very long video all right, I highly doubt a lot of you guys made it through the entire thing put bananas in the comments all right to let me know you made it this far I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my video huge thank you to everybody supporting me on Patreon your support really helps me out for a dollar or two a month you can support the channel and get access to the now 160 plus blazing videos over on patreon check out the link in the description for more information huge thank you to everybody on screen i'll put all the lists of the names on screen supporting me i really do appreciate each and every one of you guys it really helps me out let me know in the comments down below if you've ever been put into juvie what happened um, i don't need any like you know super details or anything but like you know hey what was your experience like i'm looking forward to making the next parts of this video i know i've been saying i'm gonna make this video for like a couple of months now i'm sorry to leave you hanging like that but hey dude we're here hopefully you guys are gonna enjoy i hope to see you guys in the next one please leave a like on the video right now do it follow me on all my social medias stay high stay lifted and stay snazzy